When Luvuyo Rani and his brother Lonwabo decided to sell PCs out of the boot of their car to teachers in townships, no one except them believed they'd succeed. Ten years later, they've significantly expanded their business with plans to list on the JSE. Not quite yet, give them a decade or so, but they've got big plans. This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield, and tonight I speak in Cape Town to Luvuyo Rani, the co founder and managing director of Silulo Luto Technologies. He is in our Cape Town studios. You were a teacher yourself, were you, Luvuyo? I was teaching, yes. I was teaching um, in high school in Kairich, um, teaching accounting and business economics. And, and so what sparked the idea of selling computers to teachers? Yes, that time, I mean, the government was introducing outcome-based education, which means that teachers need to use computers. So I saw that as an opportunity, more because most of my colleagues, they could not use computers. And I resigned and started selling computers on the boot of a car to schools. And it was tough. People say to me, I'm mad. Others say that to me, I'm stealing computers. But I saw the power of Stockfell, where I grouped teachers in six, and within six months, they buy computers to each other. Now, I mean, the, the power of Stockfells, and we've talked about Stockfells on the show before, and the power of community, the power of saving through collective schemes like Stockfells, was the, the catalyst then for your business. Yes, indeed, because, I mean, that time, I mean, th it was a kind of a zero. I didn't have any capital to go and buy computers. So you say that uh, in, in six of teachers, they will contribute 400, 400. So they'll give me 2.4 and go and buy computers, and then, and then I'll, I'll give them and I'll, ma I'll make my markup. And then I group them in Stockfell in different schools. That's the way that in a month I'll sell about 25 computers to 30 computers. So it was a break for me, and I think something that I th even today, some way I still use it um, for people to buy each other. Um, going into business with your brother, how did that start out? Well, with both, I mean, we grew up in, 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 in Queenstown. My mother used to run a shebin. So when we were young, we used to assist ma mothers, and, and that it becomes um, very interesting for us in terms of we wanted to do something, and we believe that um, it's business that could make us connect. And we grow so much and the connection and and I think without my brother I don't think so I'll, I'll be able to where I am today. How important were the business lessons you learned from your mum in Queenstown in the Shabin? Because she would have understood the basic business principles that people spend years studying at business schools uh, early on. Yes I mean my mother I mean she was doing this business to survive just for us to get uh, to eat to go to school and it was not a big business and what I've learned it's customers I mean suppliers and uh, uh, that kind of a relationship and selling and because I never had someone I look up to I never had role model to look up to so my reference every time is always my mother because she has done it even that time it was difficult for mm. any woman to sell liquor because it was illegal so police used to come at home kind of take the, the liquor and arrest my mother so that also in terms of growing and, and, and be involved in that business, it, it taught us in terms of the lesson of in business it's not going to be easy, but it's possible. What was the first money that you got? I mean, you, there was some money. I think your brother lent you some money in the beginning, didn't he? Um, as the, yes. the 10,000 rand in startup capital. It, it was. I mean, my brothers, I mean, started with 10,000 personal loan, and then we bought four computers, and we sold those computers within three months i mean hence we after three months see the stock fell but i mean what happens in two years selling this on a boat car so we saw an opportunity to open internet cafe but we didn't have money to open internet cafe and our, our, our i mean we blacklisted so any bank could not even ask to lend money so what we went to a to a, lend, to a guy who was opening a, a shop and asked for 30 square meters to open the internet cafe he charged us four thousand we put, we went to, to suppliers and asked for 10 computers. We put them and put the tables, put wireless. First month, 10 over, it was 350 rent. <laughs> and the expenses were 12,000. <laughs> At that point, did you, did you think of giving over up? Over six months. Yeah, did you think of giving up ever? I mean, there were, there were time you could feel it's, it's, it's tough because say, other guys, they never trust us. I mean, other dog and dog. It was tough. I mean, we just paid this one, another one complained. So, but it was a kind of a test for us to see, I mean, how can we do this thing? Okay, so from startup to where you are today, you've got a franchise model in place and the business is actually taken, has grown in leaps and bounds. 
No, it is. I mean, we've grown, I mean, in this past 10 years to extend that we have 18 centers in the Western Cape. We have 15 in the, I mean, in the Eastern Cape. So about 35 centers. We employ 140. And we're doing very well because now um, we're franchising the concept now. I mean, won't be surprised by end of this year we'll buy in Joburg. So things are looking good in terms of the business. When you talk about centers, define a center for me. Yes. The center has got five revenue drivers. It's, it's internet cafe, it's business services, it's repairs and maintenance, it's mobile support, it's uh, training people on end user computer, A plus graphic design. So it's a one stop center. Um, we hear stories of how people either went to the Raymond Ackerman Entrepreneurship Academy or in Joburg, the Richard Branson Center. Have you had any of that sort of formal training along the way or have you simply learnt it by falling on your face a hundred times? I mean, in the, in the, in the beginning, it's, it, we fall our guts. There was no training, there was no mentorship, there was no guidance. I mean, we just started, I mean, running these businesses, but what we learn along the way, and I got an opportunity to start at UCT GSP to do AIM course, and that course, it shaped me, and it, it shaped me probably after three years we're running the, the, the businesses. So those courses, I mean, uh, Ramon Akamen, they are quite key if you already started your businesses and you know exactly what to do, because they add in what you're doing. Um, and so we look at the, the business today of Silulo Luto Technologies. You've got plans, you say, to list uh, the business by 2024. Is that a pipe dream or are you being dead serious? <laughs> no, no, it is. No, it, no, it is. I mean, you become amazed to see so much opportunity in the township. Because okay, each it, and it, take every me, store take, that take me we through have, that. it's profitable. Take me through that because no, I mean, like people, it, people often will look at townships and say, you know what, it's a low margin business, there isn't real money to be made. Take me through a, a good case study in terms of your township businesses. No, I mean, it's, it's the, the township business, I mean, a centre which have this um, services that we have, for us it would take three to six months just to break even. So beyond brave even the GP that you're probably making about 60%, that will come back to you or within short term. I mean, your, your, your investment on the center, between 12 to 18 months, the amount that you are getting on the center, beyond that, you could make it. The only problem, most of the township centers, it's a rental for them in, mm. the, in, in the malls, because our centers are in the mall. So that's the biggest problem for smaller businesses, because those renters are exuberant and they're expensive, but beyond the rentals, because we have a brand, we have interest, people are coming in, that, I mean, because numbers are there and your, your price uh, becomes like much more cheap. I mean, for example, in the center, for us, a day we see between two to 500 people are coming in for a copy, for design, for lamination, for binding, for access to WhatsApp and access to, to email. It's a space that everyone comes in. What stops you from being overtaken by one of the established players, a CELC, uh, an MTN or, or a Vodacom, um, who could ultimately undermine and undercut you at some point? No, but I think it's because um, we could do that for us through partnership with them. I mean, um, I don't think that they've got the capacity to understand and they could do that, 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 that uh, space. Because it's not, they understand that. Because I mean, like, this internal cafe concept and training is not something new. But if you bring it together and able to understand, was more on our business is it hand holding for customers where someone never touched computers, where someone doesn't even have and what's happening in the phone. So I don't think so all these uh, big, they're able to understand it, able to, to grow that. And I think it's for us to partner with Vodacom or Telcom enables to scale it to make sure that every township in South Africa, we have a saloon. Um, are you still in business with your, with your brother, Lone Wab? No, we still. Lone Wab runs the Eastern Cape part and I run the Western Cape and I'm, I'm looking, branching to how the way is, is going to move that side. So Lone Wab is more, like uh, drivers set up the stores, run the stores, put people and, and run from there. I mean, it's, it's an amazing story of a family business then, which is growing in leaps and bounds. Um, I think it was 2014, you managed to get yourself a big loan for expansion. Where did that come from? No, I mean, we we went to Kerry's asset management company and said to them, um, we want to expand. Um, so if we could uh, fund our staff members to buy franchise, in allowing us to grow and, and, and expand. So this year, um, we will probably open 10 stores and within four years, we'll be able to have 100 stores that will be able to open it. By 2024, 
we might be able to have about 300 stores. I mean, and and from the funding point of view, I mean, we work very well with kids asset management, and they are willing to, I mean, allow us to fund our expansion. But ultimately, this is also a great empowerment vehicle for people who live in townships where access uh, to business services has been incredibly limited uh, and where particularly internet access is desperately expensive if you buy data packages, for example, in your cell phone. It is. I mean, it, it, it's this I mean, model that we have, it speaks from enterprise development. Because a center I mean, for a franchise will buy 400,000. So a guy would probably have about 500, I mean, 100,000 for a center. So 300,000 could look at from an ED point of view, where you've been funded to able to get that thing. So it's more on entrepreneurship, but, but also on access. I mean, people that are coming in, they never, I mean, they're in a position that there's no center at all. I mean, look at, go to deeper Eastern Cape, deeper, deeper Trans Guy, mm. there's nothing. So we bring in the infrastructure, we bring in, I mean, access to come. The empowerment, the student that comes after they finish with us, they will find employment, call centers, retail stores, hospitalities. They, they, I mean, they find, or they study further or find employment. I mean, with the opportunity for entrepreneurs using our stores, where people are doing tenders, using our stores. So it, it speaks in terms of social aspect, but also in terms of empowerment, the, the, the space. Louis Orani, it's a great uh, privilege to speak to you on tonight with Bruce Whitfield. I have no doubt that we will cross paths at uh, some point in the future. He's the co-founder and the managing director of Silulo Iluto Technologies, a little business from the Western Cape that started out of the boot of an Opal Corsa with 10,000 bucks of money from his brother, uh, subsequently grown very, very substantially. 18 centers, as he calls them, in the Western Cape, another 14 in the Eastern Cape with plans to expand into Gauteng. It's a small business done good employing more than a hundred people. An inspiring story out of Cape Town this evening. Thank you very much, Luvuyo Rani, for joining us this evening on Tonight with Bruce Whitfield. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Till then, bye-bye.